morning everyone this is Bree from homemadeonourhomestead.com I'm back again this morning with a revised edition for the um, face mask tutorial that I have already filmed I've had a ton of requests for um, this particular mask pattern to be revised to include a filter pocket in the back so you can place a removable filter in as well as adding a piece of metal to the bridge of the nose area so it conforms more to the face. So I've taken the last couple of days and revised the pattern uh, per all your requests. I'm also trying to address some other issues. People said that there was too much glare from my sewing table so I have my other sewing mat on here. So let me know in the comment section down below if there's any other things that you guys want to um, see or any other issues you're noticing with the video quality and I will um, try to get those addressed. So for now we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, go over the revisions I've made to this mask pattern. If you haven't checked out the first video of how to construct this mask I'll go ahead and put a link in the description box down below as well as put it up in the cards. Um, I'm not going to make this mask from start to finish as far as the straps are concerned so if you want to know how to make these straps uh, refer to the first video. So for now we're just going to go ahead and get started doing the revisions for this mask pattern again to include the filter pocket in the back and the piece of metal over the bridge of the nose. So to get started you're going to want three pieces of your main fabric cut to nine by seven inch dimensions. Now if you use the dimensions from the previous video which were ten by seven those will also work. Uh, for this mask I was making it for somebody in particular and they asked for it to be a bit smaller so this one was cut to a nine by seven. So you're going to take three pieces of that fabric cut nine inches long by seven inches wide. You're going to start off by taking two of the pieces and you're going to lay them right sides together. Now all this is going to do is get us started making that filter pocket for the back of our masks. You can pin this in the four corners or around the edges if you want. Um, this part is optional. Once you have the two pieces of fabric facing right sides together, you're gonna go ahead and fold it in half lengthwise and just give it a little uh, quick press with the iron. This is just gonna indicate the center of these two pieces. So I've pressed that, so if you open it up, now you can see the nice pressed seam down the center. You're going to start at the top and you're going to sew down on both sides, leaving about a two and a half or three inch opening in the center of the mask. Now this is going to create the pocket for the removable and replaceable filter. Don't forget to backstitch at the top and at the end of each line of stitching just to reinforce it. This part of the mask is going to be tugged on a little bit because you're replacing a filter. So it's important to make sure that you reinforce your stitching. You leave that gap in the center, cut your threads, and start sewing again towards the other end, making sure again that you backstitch at that opening. Now as you can see, you've sewn the seam through the center, leaving an opening in the middle. Now you're going to go ahead and take your fabric, you're going to fold this side up to your line of stitching, you're going to fold this side up and you're going to give it a press. Then you're going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so now we've gone ahead and we've pressed these two pieces that we just stitched together, leaving the opening in the center. We've pressed them wrong sides together on this side, wrong sides together on this side, creating this opening in the center. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch about a quarter inch away from the center seam on this side as well as this side, and this is just gonna reinforce this pocket opening that's gonna have a lot of tension on it. If you don't wanna do this part, you don't have to, it is optional. Go ahead and turn. And so a quarter inch away on the other side from that center seam. Go ahead and trim up your threads. 
And if you end up with your completed mask and the opening for the filter is less than three inches, it's not a big deal. Most of the filter material that's going in these is super flexible and will be able to be inserted regardless. So once you have all your threads trimmed up, we're gonna go ahead and put the mask together. Okay, now that our threads are all trimmed up, we have our back of our mask with our filter pocket opening on it. We're gonna go ahead and take the third piece of fabric that we have, and we're gonna lay that right sides facing up. Now again, if you didn't catch the first video where I showed you how to make these straps, go ahead and watch that video for uh, this part if you need to. So these are the straps that I have completed um, for the other masks. I have tied knots in the end of them. This is just, again, to help with the fraying. So you're gonna need four straps that are cut 20 inches long. Now, sewing these straps, if you miss the dimensions, they're 20 inch long pieces of fabric that are two inches wide, and I create essentially this piece of bias tape to make the straps myself. I was told uh, by several people that bias tape is getting more and more hard to find because so many people are helping with these masks. So go ahead and check out that video if you need to see how to construct these straps. But right here I have four straps that are already done. You're going to go ahead and you're going to pin about a half an inch, quarter inch to a half an inch from the top. And you're going to pin that in place. going to do it with the raw end facing this raw end here with the long piece of the strap facing towards the center. Go ahead and pin the strap down towards the bottom as well. Again leaving anywhere from a half an inch to a quarter inch. It's really up to you. Uh, both will work and both fit the face just fine. Go ahead and turn it. Pin your other two straps on. Okay, now your mask straps are all pinned into place. You're gonna go ahead and take that filter pocket for the back that you just created. It doesn't matter which side is facing up or down because at this point they should both look the same. And you're gonna go ahead and pin that in place. So very carefully just make sure you line up the corners, remove that pin that's holding that strap in place and place it through all the layers. And go ahead and do that on all the other sides. We have all those sides pinned. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna sew all the way around the exterior. This mask is a little bit different because there is a filter pocket in the back. You don't need to leave the opening on the side like we did with the last mask. We're actually gonna sew around the entire outside of this mask. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and at the end. And again, I like to reinforce the straps so when you come to that part to sew, I like to backstitch over this once just because it's gonna have a lot of tension on it. So now you've finished sewing your mask, now we're gonna turn it right sides out. So go ahead and through that pocket in the back for the filter, you're gonna go ahead and just gently ease your mask out. Once you have it turned inside out, we're gonna go ahead and use whatever instruments you have to kind of help force the corners out. Um, I've heard people saying crochet hooks, which is an awesome suggestion if you have one. Um, chopsticks, I was just using scissors before. I do have a handy little tool that I sometimes use as well. So go ahead, poke those corners out and then give it a quick press. 
Okay, so we have our seams all pressed open nice and flat. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create the pleats before we add in the piece of metal into the nose band area of our mask. So we're gonna go ahead and take our mask and we're gonna fold it in half and just give it a quick press. This is just gonna create a nice um, center seam that we're gonna use to go by when we create our pleats. Okay, now that we have pressed all of our seams out, our mask is laying nice and flat. We're gonna go ahead and flip it over so the filter pocket is facing up. Fold your mask in half and then give it a quick press. This is just gonna kind of give us a control line to go off of when we're folding our mask to create the pleats. So give this a quick press. So that way when you open up the mask, you should be able to see your pressed line. Take the top edge of your mask and you're gonna fold it down so your fold meets that seam line that you just created with your iron. And then go ahead and give that a press as well. Okay, so there's your top fold. Now you're gonna go ahead and take that, and kind of fold it back over on itself, just making those accordion folds. When it's folded and pressed, you want it about three to three and a quarter inches. Going to want to go ahead and press these in place and this is what it should look like after you've had your seams all pressed now we're going to go ahead and we're going to insert the wire for the nose bridge of our mask so you're going to turn it over and open it up now for this mask i did use a piece of pipe cleaner but you can really use whatever you have on hand this pipe cleaner I cut to seven inches long because you're gonna need to fold the ends in probably about a quarter inch or so back in on itself. Now this is just making it so that really sharp edge of the wire isn't gonna poke through your fabric. So go ahead and do that to both sides. Now we're gonna go ahead and insert this through our filter pocket opening in the back of our mask. Slide it up to the bridge of the nose and you're gonna to wanna to try to make sure it's centered as best you can on your mask. Once you kind of have it in place, you can kind of use your finger as a guide just to see that you have about the same amount on both sides of the end of each wire piece. If not, you can just keep adjusting until it's about where you want it. And I think that's about good. You're gonna to wanna to push that wire up to that top seam as much as you possibly can then we're going to go ahead and sew down, creating this tube for the wire to rest in. Now we've sewn our channel for the piece of wire. Now we're going to go ahead and make just a quick, short little seam on this side of the wire and on this side. And this is just going to make sure that the wire sits nicely in place and it doesn't shift from this end of the mask to this end of the mask. Kind of refold our mask following those iron seams that we made earlier and you can go ahead and pin it in place or just stitch it um, it's up to you at this point I would say if you also wanted to top stitch around the entire perimeter of the mask you can do that for this one um, I didn't but I did do that on my last tutorial so it's really up to you I like to backstitch over the areas where the strap is just to reinforce this a little bit, as well as the area where the pleat is. I backstitch and go forward, backstitch again in this area just to really reinforce that area that's going to be tugged on a lot. And your mask is now completed. And that's all there is to adding a simple filter pocket to the back of your mask, as well as a piece of metal in the bridge of the nose. These masks are still 100% washable. All right, and now our mask is complete. We have a filter pocket in the back for a removable filter. The mask can still be washed. We put a piece of metal in the bridge of the nose so it conforms more to the face. 
The ties are about 19.5 inches long from the mask to the end. So this is plenty of room to be able to tie um, for a male air. So the ties are long enough to uh, use for a male or a female. I did make again a little knot on the end just to keep the ends from fraying, but there you go. There is a revised edition of the surgical mask with the filter pocket and the metal for the bridge of the nose. So I really just wanted to get this out as quickly as possible for you guys who've been asking for a revised edition of the surgical mask. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Thanks so much for watching.